Hello, my name is Allison Burks, and I chose Alice in Wonderland that is located in New York City at East 74th Street in Central Park. Joseph de Creef, a Spanish-born, French-trained, constructed the Alice in Wonderland sculpture in Central Park, north of the Conservatory Water, in 1959, under the commission of the philanthropist George de la Corte. Alice in Wonderland was a tribute to Delacorte's late wife, Margarita, and a gift to the New York City. The Alice in Wonderland sculpture was from the original illustrations of John Tenniel's from the first published edition of the book, Alice in Wonderland. The sculpture was constructed so children could visit and experience the wonder of Lewis Carroll's classic story. Children are invited to climb, play, sit, and etc. all over the sculpture, unlike most sculptures. Alice, the centerpiece, depicts the face of Creef's daughter, Donna. However, Delacorte's wife, Margarita, was a Lewis Carroll reader, and this is where he found his inspiration for the sculpture after she passed away. The sculpture faces the conservatory water, which is surrounded by benches for people to sit and enjoy the scenery. This area with the conservatory water and the Alice in Wonderland sculpture has been in many films and TV shows. The asymmetrical balance sculpture stands at 11 feet tall and is made from bronze. Alice in Wonderland is a realistic and naturalistic form of the real characters from Carol's story with Delacorte's own inspiration. There are mushrooms and reptiles and alligators surrounding the bottom of the sculpture, along with a tree on the back left of the sculpture. Alice, the Mad Hatter, and the White Rabbit are so finely detailed with the way that they are dressed, it is like I was looking at Alice in Wonderland book or the movie. The sculpture is in a circular area with benches surrounding for parents or guardians to sit and watch their children or beloved ones play all over Alice and her friends. Around the sculptures are seven bronze tablets with the inscriptions of the Jabberwocky, Delacorte's wife's favorite poem. The composition of this work of art is to let children be children. Like stated before, Delacorte's entire plan for this sculpture was to let children climb on top. All the figures are in a three-dimensional form with the texture and shading as if the sculpture could come to life at any moment. The texture of Alice and her friends is a polished hard look. The sculpture is shaded with darker granite to give it a more realistic feel. Alice in Wonderland, in my opinion, is a psychoanalysis mythology. The composition of Alice in Wonderland gives a happy and kid-friendly feel to any viewer that approaches Alice in Wonderland. As stated in our art history book, like art history, psychoanalysis deals with imagery, history, and creativity, which I think this describes and analyzes this sculpture to a fine point. The Alice in Wonderland sculpture deals with imagery, history, and creativity. Delacorte took Carol's story and Tenniel's images and was inspired throughout his wife's love for Lewis Carroll's work. Under Delacorte, Creef constructed a beautiful image of a children's book. This sculpture brings up feelings of childhood memories, maybe good or bad for the adults, and while for children it brings a feeling of unrealistic fantasy playground. Just from my 20 minute stop, I felt like as a 22 year old girl, I was reliving my childhood as I sat on the mushroom just to take a picture. Alice in Wonderland is a surrealistic style. According to our textbook, Andre Breton says, advocated art and literature based on Freud's psychoanalytic technique of free association as means of exploring the imagination and entering the world of myth, fear, fantasy, and dream. This term, surreal, means a higher reality or state of being that is more than what it appears to be. I think as a viewer and as a critic, the sculpture falls into this category. Alice in Wonderland is a surreal story. And Delacorte and Creef combined literature and art to create a sculpture that lets children slip into a surreal world and dream of fantasies and a different life. To conclude, I chose this piece of artwork because I'm a child at heart. I love the way the artwork is so simple, yet it is so detailed. Alice's dress, the white rabbit suit, and even the Mad Hatter's top hat portrays the original images in the storybook illustrated by Tenniel. I also like the way Delacorte wanted his own special creativity, with Alice's face depicting his daughter and the Mad Hatter looking like Cree. This piece of artwork is beautiful. Thank you for your time, and again, my name is Allison Bergs, and this is my piece of artwork, Allison in Wonderland Sculpture.